Are there any questions with regard to what I presented last time? Or anything else with regard to the course? So, voila, everything okay so far? Okay, I'm going to finish today, um, and I, I think I will be able to, the material for uh, module one. No? At the same time, I want to go back to a few concepts that uh, I discussed last time. Actually, isa lang naman, no? that I think is important, no? and that is the passive sign convention. Okay, so if you allow me to proceed, I will uh, start. Okay, let me let me back up a little bit, no? Okay, so naalala nyo to, no? We took this up uh, last Tuesday, the passive sign convention. Okay, so we the passive sign convention is the uh, has to do with the, the the assignment of the polarity of voltage versus the direction of current, no? And that assignment is um, based on the behavior of a passive element. So last time we, we said na, th that there are two classifications for elements. It can either be a passive element or an active element. No? Ang kaibahan ng passive at saka active element, a passive element is not capable of generating power by itself. So most of the time, a passive element absorbs power. Although later on, uh, when, when uh, you study other circuit element types, particularly capacitors or inductors, you're going to find that these elements are capable of storing energy no? and, then, um, and then distributing it also later on. No? So yung, yung passive element, it most of the time absorbs power. No? So if it absorbs power, if you have charges that are flowing this way, as the charge is traversing from point one to point two, it is going to lose energy no? because the element is absorbing power that power has to come from the charges that are flowing through it. No? That is why point one has a higher potential than point two. No? Kasi na, nawawalan ng uh, potential energy or, or no, 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 sorry. Nawawalan ng energy yung charges as it goes from one to two. Kaya ganito yung assignment ng voltage, uh, polarity, at saka current direction. No? Now, according to passive sign convention, if a situation opposite the convention is encountered, the relationship between V and I should be made negative. So I'd like to give an example of that. No? Kinoha na natin yung resistor. No? We said that for a resistor, so let me change color. We said that for a resistor, V is equal to I times R. No? Your voltage is equal to your current times your resistance. Okay. Now, what if I have a resistor? Okay. R. And let's say my assumed polarity for my resistance is this. No. So let me call this V of X, or or, or yeah, or let, let me just call that V of R. Okay, and then let's say, okay, your current, the assigned direction for the current, and let's say this was a current because there were several other components in the circuit. No? Let's say the current ended up this direction. So note that that is now opposite this convention. That is now opposite this convention. Because now your current is moving from the negative to the positive. So ang sinasabi ng passive sign convention, if a situation opposite the convention is encountered, the relationship between V and I should be made negative. No? So in business of V equal to IR, dapat lalagyan natin dito ng negative. You have to place this negative sign. So yun lang, yun lang ibig sabihin nun. Okay. So that that actually causes some confusion sometimes but um it, it's obvious naman ano na if kung talagang ganito yung magiging direction ng current 
it's going to be obvious that when you finally get the value of V sub R, it's going to come out negative. So are there any questions with, reg with regards to that? Okay. okay, so let me move now to um, a continuation of what we were discussing last Tuesday. I want to backtrack a bit. I started a discussion last time on independent sources. Gusto kong balikan lang yun because I thought that uh, that needed more time really to be absorbed. And then we're going to go to Kirchhoff's laws and then dependent sources. So I already showed you this slide, independent sources. We start with the voltage sources. If you have an ideal voltage source, the voltage is independent of load. So this is what illustrates that. This is my voltage source. What is connected to my voltage source, I designate that as my, as my load. No? Ang sinasabi dito, kahit anuman itong load na to, hindi magbabago itong V of S. So V of S uh, is uh, pre-specified. It can be a DC voltage. It can be an AC voltage. Whatever it might be, it is not going to change if I change my load. Of course, I of S will depend on what my load is, you know, but V of S will not change. Okay. So let me let me ask you. you know, okay, let's say I have an ideal voltage source. Ten volts. And let's say my load is a resistor R. Okay. okay, ang sinasabi ng ang sinasabi natin, if this is an ideal source, so if ideal. This voltage V, regardless of, of R. No? If that is ideal, the voltage V is equal to 10 volts regardless of R. So my question to you is this. No? What if R is equal to zero? <clears throat> What if R is equal to zero? What will be the value of V? Can sub, somebody tell me what the value of V will be? Anyone shout out? No. Uh, would it still be 10 volts? No, that's what I'm asking. I don't know. I'm sorry. sorry po. <laughs> um, to replace, I, I think, sir, it would still be 10 volts. <laughs> you, think, you think it will still be 10 volts? No? Opo. Anybody sir, else? Uh, in my opinion, uh, maybe infinite. No, the value of V? Yes, sir. Infinite. Okay, I, I have two answers. One is 10 volts. The other is infinite. Any other, any other question? Uh, any other guess? It can be a guess, no? Okay, gawin ko to, no? So, a current is going to flow in my voltage source, right? The current is going to flow, I. Based on Ohm's law, what is the value of V? Zero. Zero, zero right? Because R is equal to zero. If R is equal to zero, V, which is equal to IR, will be equal to zero. But we said that this is an ideal voltage source. So there's a contradiction there. If it is an ideal voltage source, sinasabi natin, the voltage will not change regardless of the value of R. On the other hand, here I'm showing you a situation where my load is a resistance equal to zero, and yet it appears the voltage changed. So why is that so? Okay. Okay, first of all, what conclusion can I draw from this? No, so the conclusion, conclusion, 
one that there is no such thing as an ideal voltage source no There is no such thing as an ideal voltage source. Okay, what, what is the other conclusion we can make to the circuit that is shown is invalid. Okay, this is actually This is actually an, if R is equal to zero, this is an invalid circuit. No? If R is equal to zero. I'm going to tell you why it's an invalid circuit uh, later on, no? okay? Okay, um, so the question, this begs the question, you know? So what, what will happen, for example, if I have a battery, if I have a battery and I connect a short across it, what do you think the voltage across the battery is going to be? It is going to be zero because whatever the current might be, if you have a resistance equal to zero, the voltage across it will be equal to zero. So what happened to the battery voltage? Actually in real life, a voltage source has what is called an internal resistance. If I were to model a real voltage source, so going to dito, no? A real voltage source okay a real voltage source consists of an ideal voltage source v and an internal resistance and then this is now your these are now your terminals so ito yung voltage source ko The voltage source is what is enclosed there, no? Of course, what you have access to is this. In other words, if this is a battery, if that is a battery, itong internal resistance na to, hindi mo makikita yan, no? That is just something that is used to model the behavior of your, of your battery. It's something internal to the battery. You, are not, you don't have access to it, you cannot see it. What you have access to is this. So if I short this, if I short that, Lahat nitong voltage na to dito pupunta, dito sa internal resistance. No? And that will make the current here not equal to infinity. No? Because if you, if, you consider, if you consider this case, no? actually if R, is equal to, if R is equal to zero, then I will approach infinity no? because uh, 10 volts divided by zero will give you infinity. But here, your current will be limited by that internal resistance. So I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you that um, there's no such thing as a real an ideal voltage source no? and that a, a, re a real voltage source will have an internal resistance. Any question with regard to that? And then kung may voltage source, kung may ideal voltage source, meron din tayong ideal current source. Your ideal current source, your current is this time independent of load. So this is the depiction of an, of an ideal current source with a load connected to it. Kahit anuman tong load na to, whatever this load might be, this current will always be equal to IS. Now the voltage will change depending on the load, but the current will never change. So this is... Okay, a representation of a DC current source, and this is a representation of an AC current source. Now, a current source is a little bit abstract to most people. Kasi ang, ang, uh, the common person, um, the common person, for example, does not have exposure to current sources. Alam, alam, ang alam lang natin is voltage source. What are the voltage sources that we experience every day? We experience our batteries. We experience the, the voltage coming out of our outlets provided by Meralco. The voltage probably 
um, produced by a generator if you happen to have a backup generator in your house. So th those are voltage sources that we encounter every day. But we don't encounter current sources every day. But there are current sources, no? Um, specifically electronic, electronic devices that act as current sources. Because sometimes we don't want our supply to be a voltage source, but we want it to be a current source. I'll give an example. No? An, an LED, yung, yung LED, for example, na ginagamit sa, sa mga ilaw ngayon. No? Right now, everything is shifting from, from incandescent or compact fluorescent lamps to LED. Actually, that LED lamp that you use or that you might have in your house, the voltage from Meralco is converted to a current source because LEDs like to be current driven. They don't want to be voltage driven. What an LED wants is for a constant current to be flowing through it rather than for a constant voltage across it. So meron yang tinatawag na LED driver that converts from voltage to current. So that is a current source. Now, is there, is there such a thing as an ideal current source? No? So I, I pose the same situation. Let's say I have a DC current source. Let's call this I. And my load is a resistor, R. So naturally, an I here will flow. No? Let's call that small letter I. No? Of course, I should be equal to capital letter I. Okay, now what if R is equal to infinity? Who knows what an infinite resistor is? Can someone tell me? Ano yung infinite resistance? Just shout it out. Anyone? When you say, when, when pag sinabi kong the, resist, the resistance between two points is infinite, anong ibig sabihin nun? Sir, pag open po yung circuit. Open exactly. Circuit. No? Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for those answers. No? Kapag open circuit, you say that's an infinite resistance no? pag, pag open yung circuit okay bakit sinasabing infinite resistance remember what is resistance resistance is the tendency of a material to resist or to impede the flow of current okay kapag open yung circuit hindi pwede magflow yung current kasi wala siyang dadaanan it's open there's no place for the current or for the charges to flow no? And therefore, your resistance is infinite. So if my resistance is infinite, ano magiging value nitong I na to? If this is an open circuit, ano magiging value ng I? If this for is me, an open circuit. For me, sir, no current. Yeah, there will be no current, no? So if I, I is equal to, if R is equal to infinity, I will be equal to zero. There will be no current. So now I have a contradiction. Is I equal to I? Or is I equal to zero? Sabi natin, if this is a, an ideal current source, this current will always be equal to capital letter I. But then if my load is equal to infinite, that current is equal to zero. So that is a contradiction. So ganun din, ano? I, I, I make the same analogy with voltage sources. All that means is there is no such thing as an ideal current source in real life. No? As an ideal current source. Okay. And if R is equal to infinity, in other words, if I have a current source and this is open, and that is open, this is actually an invalid circuit. That is actually an invalid circuit. 
you cannot have you cannot have an ideal current source with nothing connected to it that will be an invalid circuit because a current has to flow but in this case there is no current flowing may pagka abstract ano a real current source again no? a real current source consists of an ideal current source, let's say I sub S, and inside it, there is a resistance in parallel. So you have an internal resistance. And this is your, this is your real current source. Again, that internal resistance, just like in your real voltage source, is something internal, hindi nyo nahikita. It's something that you cannot access. In fact, there is probably no real physical resistor inside. It's just, this is just something that you, you put in your model, okay, to model the behavior of a real current source. What you have access to is on, are only these terminals. So that is your real current source. Any questions? Did I cause some confusion? I hope I did not, I know. but uh, sooner or later, you're going to encounter situations like this. So I'm, I'm telling you this so that you can, you can visualize what's happening in your heads. Okay, let's move on. Let's discuss uh, Kirchhoff's loss, Kirchhoff's loss. So there are two very popular laws of uh, Kirchhoff. First is Kirchhoff's current law, and the second is Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law. And Kirchhoff's current law says that the algebraic sum of all currents directed away from a node is equal to zero. Okay. So this is a node. This is a node. I have currents that are directed toward a node that is I2 and I1. And I have currents that are directed away from the node that is I3 and I4. Okay, when we say algebraic, when we say algebraic, that means the current is assigned a sign. And the usual convention is that if it is entering the node, it is negative. If it is leaving the node, it is positive. Entering the node, it's negative. Leaving the node, it is positive. But that's just a convention. If you don't like that, you can do the opposite. Pwede nyo going entering the node is positive, leaving the node is negative. Okay, so we say algebraic no? because we assign a sign depending on the direction. So I1 and I2 are negative because they are entering the node. I3 and I4 are positive because they are leaving the node. You sum those all up, that should be equal to zero. So this is the application of Kirchhoff's current law to this particular node. What is a node? A node is a point of connection between two or more elements. Point of connection between two or more elements. Another way of stating Kirchhoff's current law is that the sum of all currents entering a node equals the sum of all currents leaving the node. No? So if I were to use the second definition, it will definition at all, okay, that would mean that entering the node, that's I1 plus I2, is equal to the sum of currents leaving the node, that is I3 plus I4. Okay, why must Kirchhoff's current law be true? Okay, remember that I, well, I, let's say it's a, no, no, it's an average current. I is equal to delta Q over delta T, no? Or I is equal to dQ by dT. So we studied that last time. Okay, this is the, this is the rate at which charges flow across a cross-sectional um, area. No? 
the rate at which charges flow across a cross-sectional area. If this sum, if this sum were not equal to zero, anong ibig sabihin nun? No? That means that the charges flowing into for a given time will not be equal to the charges flowing out of for the same amount of time. No? And if that is the case, that means there is charges that is accumulating inside the node. No? Kung, hindi, kung, hindi, uh, kung hindi tama yung Kirchhoff's current law, ang ibig sabihin nun, hindi balance yung charges na pumapasok sa charges na lumalabas for a given period of time. Ibig sabihin, may nag accumulate sa loob. Either may nag accumulate or may nag -de deplete na charge sa loob. But a point or a node is not capable of storing any charge. A node or a point does not have any charge storing capability. Therefore, Kirchhoff's current law has to be true. You might think of it as a conservation of charge. Okay. Now we have a special case. Okay. Your special case natin is, let's say your node connects only two elements. So this is my node. It connects only two elements. So naturally, if this is I1, this is I2, okay, you will have I1 is equal to I2. Yung isa papasok, yung isa palabas, no? which is equal to I. In other words, what this is saying is when you have two elements that are in series, so these two elements are in series. No? Again, how do we know they're in series? The head of one is connected to the tail of the other, and there is no other element that is connected to this node. No? Kapag, may nak kapag may ibang nakakapit dito, hindi na nakaseries yung dalawang to. No? So there should no be no other element connected to this, to this node. No? When you have two elements in series, you only have one current that flows through both those elements. So when you have any number of elements in series, there will only be one current that flows through all those elements. So that is a consequence of Kirchhoff's current law. Any question with respect to this? Any question? I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you already know some of these concepts. Ano? Kinoha na nyo either sa physics or sa, sa high school. No? So um, if there are any misconceptions, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, at least they are corrected now. Okay, let's go to the other Kirchhoff's law and that's Kirchhoff's voltage law. And what Kirchhoff's voltage law says is the algebraic sum of the voltage drops taken in a specified direction around a closed path is zero. The algebraic sum of the voltage drops taken in a specified direction. So let's take a look at this particular path. This is a closed path. No, This is a closed path. Ang ibig sabihin ng closed path is your starting point and your ending point are the same. That is what a closed path means you take the algebraic sum of the voltage drops. So what does that mean? If you encounter a voltage and you are, well, first of all, no, you, you take the algebraic sum of the voltage drops in a specified direction. So, so in this case, I chose to go clockwise. I'm going in the clockwise direction. If I encounter a positive to negative voltage, that is a voltage drop no? from a higher potential to a lower potential. I consider that to be positive. On the other hand, if I encounter a negative to positive voltage, so again, no? if I'm going clockwise, dito, pag tinignan mo dito sa V1, I'm encountering a negative to positive voltage as I traverse this clockwise. That is not a voltage drop. That is a voltage rise. 
And therefore, I assign a negative sign to that. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng algebraic. No? So for example, in this particular case, V1 is a rise, a voltage rise. V4 is a voltage rise. And therefore, I make both of them negative. V2 is a voltage drop. V3 is a voltage drop. I make both of them positive. If I add all of that, that should be equal to zero. <coughs> Another way of stating Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of the voltage rises equals the sum of the voltage drops when taken in a specified direction around a closed path. So what are my voltage rises? My voltage rises are V1 and V4. The sum of that should be equal to my voltage drops, which is V2 and V3. So that is applying Kirchhoff's voltage law using this second or alternate definition. My closed path is a loop or a mesh. Later on um, in the next module, we are going to define what, what we mean by loop or by mesh. Now, how do we know, or what is the, what, what, why must Kirchhoff's voltage law be true? Why must Kirchhoff's voltage law be, be true? Remember that V, okay, is equal to DQ, DW by DQ. D is the, um, V is a potential, uh, potential difference. It is the, the change in energy that a unit charge will encounter as it traverses the element. The change in energy that a unit charge will encounter as it traverses an element. So if I had one column of charge, V2 is the change in energy that that charge will encounter when I go from this point to, to this point. Okay. Now, if my, if my starting point and my ending point are the same point, then that means my total energy change should be equal to zero. No? If, you, if you start and end at the same point, then your total energy change should be equal to zero. No? Because whatever energy you gain, eventually you will lose. No? Otherwise, hindi masusundan yung law of conservation of energy. No? So that is why Kirchhoff's voltage law must be true because of the law of conservation of energy. Okay. Okay, um, let's call this no, let's call these nodes A, B, C, and D. No? And let's say this is uh, V1. Let's say this is uh, V2. Uh, let's say this is V3. And uh, so we this is V4. No? I just arbitrarily assigned voltages V1, V2, V3, and V4. No? This is using, remember when we discussed uh, no, no, ways of representing voltage. So these are just um, um, uh, your first convention, no? specifying a unique voltage per uh, um, across each, uh, no, no, across each uh, um, element. No? Hindi, hindi double subscript notation or hindi, uh, no, no, hindi single subscript notation, but the unique voltage. Okay. Um, can someone tell me what my KVL equation is if I traverse this clockwise? No? So be not I traverse this clockwise. Can, can, can someone help me? No? Ano yung magiging KVL equation ko? 
Anyone? Should I, or should I, you know, should I call someone out at random? Any volunteer? No brave soul? Okay, uh, see Albert, no? Can you tell me? Um, it's V1 plus V4 minus V2 minus V3 equals C. V1 plus V4 minus minus v2 minus v3 equals zero i wait po. <laughs> it's negative v1 po. negative okay v1. okay yeah okay tama to no okay okay um ito yung tanong ko no supposing so, uh, sorry Sorry. No? Hmm. Okay, now it works. Supposing tanggalin ko yan. Can I still apply KBL? Can I still apply KBL? Anyone? So this is, uh, by the way, no, this is KVL, by the way, this is uh, KVL along path A, B, C, D. So now I took out my element here. Can I still apply KVL along path A, B, C, D? Okay. Uh, some brave souls, thank you very much for attempting to answer. So sabi ni Clyde, hindi. Sabi ni Andrea, hindi. Anyone else? Uh, Clyde, uh, if you turn on your audio, can you tell me why? Or why you think not? Um, Sir, I don't think I answered po. <laughs> Baka iba no, po yan. Ano yan? Ano yan? Hindi po ata ako yung nagsagot po sa chat. Ah, teka. Oh, okay. Uh, Ay, okay naka, kasi... naka ano lang po yung emoji. Ah, okay. Sige. Pero sir, so, since naka-on na po yung mic ko. My, okay. my thoughts po sir is, I don't really know. Kasi po kapag open circuit, we have infinite resistance and no current. Pero pag zero resistance po, we have no voltage. Pero we didn't consider po if meron okay. pong voltage and current. Thank you, no? um At least, Pinag-iisipan mo, no? which is actually why what I'm trying to get you people to do. No? Because for, for you to really learn what we're talking about, you really have to try to assimilate it. No? And it's important that you go through, through these thought processes. Okay? The answer is, yes, I can still. No? Even, if, even if, okay, it is an open circuit, between B and C, I can still apply KVL to A, B, C, D, A. No? A, B, C, D, A. Dapat magsara. Why, no? Um, tama, tama ka, right, that uh, there is no current between B and C. But just because there's no current between B and C does not mean there is no voltage between B and C. As a matter of fact, I can assign a voltage variable here. No? Using my double subject notation, I can call this VBC. Just because there is no current does not mean there is no voltage. And my KVL can be applied even if my path is not physically closed. In other words, pare, no? minus V1 plus V4 minus uh, 
V2, okay, minus VBC is equal to zero. I oh, know, sorry, sorry, plus VBC. Uh, minus V1, uh, plus VBC, sorry. Any question with regard to that? No? So just because just because it is open circuit does not mean there is no voltage across it. No? There will be a voltage across your two terminals. No? There will be a potential difference between th these two terminals. So you can still apply Kir Kirchhoff's voltage law. Let me move on. No? Okay, earlier I said that that I showed you a, a constant voltage source with a short across it, and sabi ko that circuit is invalid. When is a circuit invalid? A circuit is invalid if it does not follow either KCL, Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's current law, or KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. If it does not, if it, if it does not satisfy either of lo those laws, you have an invalid circuit. So can you tell me which of the following circuits are valid or invalid? Sorry. <laughs> Anyone? I think you already saw the answers. So let ano na lang, no? Sabay -sabay na lang, no? If, if you can tell me, no? What about it all? Is this valid or invalid? Letter A. Valid because it's equal. Yes, valid, no? Because if I if I try to apply KVL here, okay? If I try to apply KVL here, I'm going to get here voltage rise minus 10 volts plus 10 volts is equal to zero. So okay, yeah, no? That's valid. Okay, what about here? Valid or invalid? Anyone? Yes, no? Valid. Why? If I apply KCL here, KCL, dito, okay? Entering the node, I'm going to get minus 5 amperes. Okay, leaving the node plus 5 amperes, that is equal to zero. So it satisfies KCL. So obviously, ito, Obviously, this is invalid. No, why? If I try to if I try to do KVL here, KVL ahorito, so I'm going to get minus ten volts plus five volts is equal to zero. Teka. Obviously, hindi. No. So this is invalid. Ganon din dito. No. Obviously, this is invalid. Okay, so ang tanong ngayon ito, what about this? Is this valid or invalid? Ito, I want, I want people to commit a guess, no? Uh, yes or no? I have a guess po, sir. Okay, glad, um, glad. Oh. I think we can say it's valid po kasi both sources are independent of each other. Okay, anyone else? Okay, basta walang contradiction, basta walang contradiction, it is valid. And here there's no contradiction. No? I don't know, I don't know what this current is, no? I don't, sorry about that. Um, I don't know what the current flowing through my 10 volt is, but actually that should be equal to five amperes. No? In other words, my current flowing through the 10 volt source should be equal to five amperes. And the voltage across my five ampere source should be equal to 10 volts. But this does not violate any KCL or KVL. No? So letter C is valid. Okay. So it's important, it's important that when you see a circuit, 
one of the first things that you try to do is to determine whether that circuit is valid or invalid. Kasi, kung bigyan kayo ng circuit para i-analyze, it turns out that that circuit is invalid. Kahit na anong math na gawin nyo, you're not going to get a correct answer. So you have to be able to discern whether a circuit is valid or invalid. Okay? Okay, now that you know KCL and KVL, um, you are in a position to solve what we call single loop circuits. In a single loop circuit, all elements in the circuit are in series. So if this is an example of a single loop circuit. All elements in the circuit are in series. In a single loop circuit, usually we apply KVL to solve for the unknown circuit quantity. Typically in a circuit, what you know are your sources and what you know are your circuit elements. So dito, again, this is typically, not all the time, but typically. So dito, ang, ang, ang known natin is uh, V of S, R1, R2, and R3. And what we usually would want to solve is the current I. The current I. Okay. So how do I solve for the current I? So, gaya ng hint dito, KVL used to solve for the unknown circuit quantities. No? So, I do KVL. What is my KVL? I'm going to get, okay, minus V of S plus V1 plus V2 plus V3 is equal to zero. <clears throat> but I can express V1, V2, and V3 in terms of I using Ohm's law. V1 is equal to I times R1. No? Take note that the direction of current and the polarity of the voltage is consistent with your passive sign convention. So if it is consistent with your passive sign convention, hindi mo kailangan lagyan ng negative sign dito. Again, no? I, I explained that in the beginning of the class. If it is consistent with your passive sign convention, you don't have to negate the relationship between voltage and current. So V1 is equal to I times R1. V2 is equal to I times R2. V3 is equal to I times R3. Okay. So my equation now is V of S, combining and simplifying, is equal to I times R1 plus R2 plus R3. No, or I is simply equal to V of S over R1 plus R2 plus R3. So that's how you solve for your unknown. Very easy, single loop circuit. Also very easy because these are only resistors. Meron din tayong tinatawag na single node circuit. A single node circuit is when all the elements in the circuit are in parallel. Okay. When the, when how do you know they're in parallel? Well, they're in parallel if each of them are connected at both their ends. No? For example, R1 and R2 are in parallel if they're connected at both their ends. No? The the you say another way of saying it is the head of R1 is connected to the head of R2. And the tail of R1 is connected to the tail of R2. And when you have a single node circuit, KCL is used to solve usually for the circuit unknown. Okay. Now, where is my node here? Okay. That's something that um, you're going to have to be able to identify. No? Where is my node here? Actually, this entire thing is your node. This entire thing is your node. Okay. One of the characteristics of electrical engineering is if you have a conductor, you can compress the conductor to a single point, and it is not going to change the behavior of your circuit. In other words, I could have redrawn this. I could have redrawn this in the following manner. No? 
I could have drawn it like, like this. And that is my node. That is my node. I can compress a conductor into a single point and it's not going to change the behavior of my circuit. Actually, the, the, the dual of that is I can stretch a conductor as long as I want and it is also not going to change the behavior of my circuit. Okay, so we use KCL to solve for the circuit unknown. So what is KCL applied to this particular node, to this particular node? Okay, I have minus I plus I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero. Okay, but note that I1 is the voltage across R1 divided by R1. And the voltage across R1, which is equal to the voltage across R2, which is equal to the voltage across R3 is just V sub S. No? Note that this potential difference, this voltage source or this potential difference is applied simultaneously across R1, across R2, and across R3. No? So I1 is V sub S over R1, I2 is V sub S over R2, and I3 is equal to V sub S over R3. Okay, so what, what is this now? You have I, okay? It's just equal to V sub S times one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. Okay, so that solves for my unknown I. Okay, I, I want to ask you a question. Again, please, no? uh, shout out na lang yung, yung sagot. No? How many nodes are there in this circuit? Anyone? How many nodes are there in this circuit? A node is a point of interconnection between one or more elements. How many nodes are there in this circuit? Two, Two, correct. Two. That's right. No, so magot si Ryan, so so magot si KL that there are two. So why is this called a single node circuit? <laughs> why do you call it a single node circuit? Medyo nakakataka, no? Ba't tinawag na single node circuit? Okay. Um, um, th this is all I'm going to say for now, no? Um, it's called a single node circuit because in any circuit, in any circuit, okay, if there are N nodes, if in any circuit, if there are N nodes, you only have n minus one KCL equations. Okay, hindi hindi yan masadong obvious ngayon ano, but you're going to see this later on. No? In any circuit, if you have let's say n nodes, you only have n minus one KCL equations. Right? Kasi ito, I have two nodes. I have two nodes. So this is another node. But if I write my KCL equation for this node, it's going to be exactly the same as my KCL equation for this node. Do you see that? Nakita ba nyo yon? That is going to be exactly the same. Kita nyo yon, di ba? Na yung KCL ko dito sa node na to, at saka KCL ko dito sa node na to is exactly the same. That's why usually when we refer to a circuit as as, uh, as having, let's say, X number of nodes, we are referring to the number of KCL equations I can form in that circuit. That's why even if this is two nodes, we still call it a single node circuit because I can only form one KCL equation. Okay, so I hope that that doesn't confuse people. 
Okay. We have independent sources. Meron din tayong tinatawag na dependent sources. No? Dependent sources behave like independent sources except that the output voltage or current depends on another voltage or current existing somewhere else in the circuit. In other words, it is not independent. No? My, my voltage or my current is not independent. It depends on something. What does it depend on? It depends on a voltage or a current that exists somewhere else in the same circuit. And we use dependent sources to model electronic devices. Later on, when you, when you take up your uh, electronics courses, your, your first electron, ah, um, uh, no, no, uh, later on pala this semester, no? Um, you're, going to you're going to start uh, taking up electronic devices. So you're going to see that the model for these devices are actually dependent sources. Okay, so the controlled quantity, that is the, the value of the source, or the, yeah, the, the source that, that we have is either a voltage source or a current source. No? That is the controlled quantity. The controlling quantity is also either a voltage or a current. So there are four possible combinations. No? You have your voltage controlled voltage source, voltage controlled current source, current controlled voltage source, and current controlled current source. So usually we, we just shortcut, we just say this is a VCVS, voltage controlled voltage source. This is a voltage controlled current source, current controlled voltage source, and a current controlled current source. This is how we represent each of these. So this is, okay, if it is a controlled source by convention, you always use a diamond symbol. If it is an independent source, ang ginagamit natin is a circle. No? Pag independent source, ang ginagamit natin circle. Pag controlled source, ang ginagamit natin usually diamond yung symbol. Okay? So this is a voltage source. Okay? What is the, what is the output voltage? My output voltage is a, a, a constant AV multiplied by V of X. Now, where is V of X? V of X is somewhere else in the circuit. No? It's somewhere else in the circuit. So this is how we represent this V of X. Okay. Now, AV, we sometimes refer to that as the voltage gain. And this is dimensionless because AV is volts per volt, volts per volt. Okay, this is a voltage controlled current source. So here you see a current source and the current flowing in the upward direction. The value of my current is G of M times V of X, where V of X is again somewhere else in the circuit, somewhere else in the circuit. Okay, G of M is amperes per volt. No, G of M is amperes per, per volt. It converts a volt, it converts this voltage into a current. Now, what is amperes per volt? That is Siemens. No? Yung unit yan is Siemens, the same unit as conductance. And that's why you call this G of M, you call this a transconductance. Ito naman, this is your current controlled voltage source. So again, here I have a voltage source with polarity uh, plus on top minus below. The value of my voltage source is R of M multiplied by I of X. And I of X is somewhere else in the circuit here. No? It's somewhere else in the circuit. <clears throat> now, what are the units of R of M? It converts current to current. No. Uh, oh, sorry, it converts current to voltage. It converts current to voltage. So it's volts per current, no? Volts per ampere. Okay. Volts per ampere. What is volts per ampere? That is ohms. 
So your unit is ohms, and you call it a trans resistance. Trans resistance. And finally, your current controlled current source converts current to current. The unit for your constant is uh, dimensionless. You call this a current gain because it is amperes per ampere. Okay, okay don't worry too much about what you call the constant yet, I know. Um, we're going to appreciate that more later on, I know. But anyway, this is your concept of uh, your in the, your dependent sources. Okay, having said that, let's go again to this exercise: valid or invalid circuits. No? So, if you think it's valid, uh, it thumbs up nyo, no? If you think it's invalid, it thumbs down. It thumbs down na lang niyo, no? So, letter A, valid or invalid? Okay, mukhang tama kayin lahat, ano? Those that answered, okay. If I do, if I do a KVL, so this is V of X, this is V of X. If I do a KVL, I'm going to get, okay, minus V of X plus three V of X is equal to zero, right? Because it's minus V of X plus V of S is equal to zero, you no? Know? Or V of X is equal to V of S, no? But V of X cannot equal to three V of X. Okay, the only time that will happen is if uh, V of X is equal to zero, but this is supposed to be a general case, no? And so this is invalid, okay? So this is invalid. Okay, what about letter B? Valid or invalid? Okay, so I hope you're not copying each other's answers. So there's no contradiction sa, sa letter B. No? Um, all, all this is doing, all this controlled source is doing, is it is constraining the current that if, is flowing through V of X. No? It is dictating the current that is flowing through V of X. But Kirchhoff's current law or Kirchhoff's voltage law is not being um, violated. No? Wala namang problema. Okay, so this is okay. What about C? At ang C at saka B is, is, uh, ano, no? is similar. What this controlled source is doing is, is it is establishing the voltage across your current source, but you're not violating KCL or KVL. So this is also okay. And then D, ito. I'm sure you all know the answer to this already, you know. That's that's invalid, no? Because according to KCL, I of X uh, plus I of S should be equal to zero. No? I of X, sorry. According to KCL, no? I of L plus I of X should be equal to zero. Okay? But I of S, sorry, I of X plus I of S, but I of S is equal to three times I of X. So that will come out impossible. Okay. Because you cannot have, uh, in, in effect, ang, ang mangyari dyan is you're going to get two plus six is equal to zero, no? which you know is impossible. Okay. So this is wrong. So an example, okay. example. So now this is a practical example. Uh, this is real life application. This is the circuit of an audio amplifier. Okay. What we used to implement the audio amplifier is a transistor. And this is the model of your transistor. This is the model of your transistor. So matututunan nyo yan 
later on in the course. A model is just supposed to represent the mathematical behavior of your element. No? So this transistor model represents the mathematical behavior of a transistor. For those of you that don't know what a transistor is, don't worry, you're going to find out very, very soon. No? So let that not intimidate you. Actually, um, even if I didn't put any, even if I didn't put this label here, you should already be able to solve this problem. So the circuit is that of a transistor audio amplifier. The effective value of your input voltage, okay, that is this, is two millivolts. Wag mo nang, don't worry about effective value, no? Um, effective value. Uh, just think of it as something like an equivalent DC voltage because actually an audio signal is not DC. An audio signal is, uh, um, well, it is, it can be an alternating, well, it, in general, it's just a random signal, no audio signal. No? It's, not, it's not even AC because it, it is not periodic. No? But, uh, but um, don't worry about that. Just think of the effective value as, as like it's the equivalent DC value. So the effective value of V of I is two millivolts. So the problem is find the effective value of the output voltage V of O. So you have an output voltage here. If G of M is 30 milli Siemens, 30 milli Siemens. Okay. So how do we solve this? Okay. First of all, I can form KVL around this loop. For me to perform KVL around this loop, I'm going to assign a voltage variable here. Let me call this V1. Okay. I will have a current flowing here. Let me call this uh yeah let me just call this eyes of i no eyes of i the current flowing through v of i so if i apply kvl here what will i get no? i'll get minus v of i plus v1 plus v is equal to zero okay but but v1 is equal to I of I multiplied by 500 ohms. Okay. V is also equal to I of I multiplied by 2000 ohms. This is ohms. So I can actually compute for I of I. I of I. So I can compute for I of I. That will end up being equal to V of I over 500 plus 2000. Now V of I is two millivolts. So two millivolts. Uh, just a while, no? So, no? Um, I have to attend to something for just one minute. Okay, um, to go back, no? So I of I, that is uh, two millivolts divided by 2,500. That's going to give me 
Okay. This is uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 4 millivolts. No? Now that will allow me to compute for V. Okay. V is now going to be 8 times 10 to the minus 4 millivolts times 2000. Okay, this is going to be 1.6 millivolts. Itong V, itong V na to. No? That's going to be 1.6 millivolts. Okay. So I used, I used KVL here, of course, plus Ohm's law, to be able to find my va the value of I1. Once I found the value of I1, I can now determine V. That is just equal to I1 multiplied by 2000. So now I know what this current is. I know what this current is. No? So this current, this current is now equal to 30 millisiemens multiplied by V, no? multiplied by 1.6 millivolt. Okay. So I know now I know, I know now this current. No? Okay. Itong current na to, let me call this uh, let me call this I1, no? I1. Let's say this is I2. Let's say this is I3. So I know that I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to zero. But I2 is equal to V sub O over 75K. I3 is equal to V sub O over 10K. Okay. So if I plug this, if I plug these values back in this equation, knowing I1, I only have one unknown. I can solve for V of O. Let me do that. Ano? So ito, I1, my I1 is this. No? That's 30 millisiemens multiplied by 1.6 millivolts. Okay. Plus. V of O over 75K plus V of O over 10K is equal to zero. No? So can I can solve for V of O. So I'm I'm not going I'm not going to convert this into a math lesson. No. You should be able to solve that. You all took algebra. No? Anyway. These are what your answers are going to be. You know? The effective value of the voltage V sub O is going to be ito, no? negative 423.5 millivolts. Okay. You're going to find out, you're going to find out that I3 is negative. You know, lalabas dito. Okay. And if you divide, if you divide V sub O by V sub I. You're going to see that V of O is, in terms of magnitude, 211 times larger than V of I. That's why you call this an amplifier. So I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you um, do that exercise or, or work out that exercise on your own. Okay. So that's all I wanted to discuss for today. Um, Any questions? Any questions? Okay, um, my recommendation, I'm going to post ito mga annotated notes. I'm going to post this um, in Uble, and I'm also going to uh, send a link to this particular lecture in, in Uble, I'm going to put it in YouTube, no? 
Now I'm going to tell you what, what where to look for where to look for it in in YouTube. So try to go through the material again and try to again assimilate what was talked about. No? Um, and uh, good luck for the rest of the module. Remember that um, you're supposed to submit your quiz or you're supposed to complete your quiz before Wednesday next week, and you're supposed to submit your problem set uh, by, before the end of uh, Friday next week. Okay. So that's all. Uh, there are no questions. I'll, I'll, I'm officially ending this session, but I'll stick around until the last person logs out just in case there are any questions. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paul, sir. Thank you, Paul. Welcome.